You are now watching Zach Lesage PTCG. Let's get it. Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? Welcome back. Today we are gonna be going over the top 10 decks for the month of April, uh, the fourth week of April that is, because we do this every single week, every single Monday. So stay tuned to see how the metagame changes based off tournament results, my personal opinion, and more. So I've gone through, combed through the Play Limitless website, figured out which decks were performing the best and ranked them accordingly. Um, and then threw in some of my own personal flair. So all of these decks are either top performing decks or my own personal list. If you're looking for these decks to play along through while you're watching this video or for future reference, you can find them in the pinned comment below. All 10 decks are there that are featured in this video. If you're missing any cards for those decks, go to ptcgostore.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE5 to save 5% on your next order of codes. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel by now, totally would appreciate it. You can subscribe right there. I put out a lot of great Pokemon content, so ter I would really appreciate it. We're so close to 3,500 subs, and it's been an absolutely amazing journey. Uh, give this video a like for awareness, and you wanna know what? Let's just jump into our number 10 pick. So jumping into our number 10 spot, we have Orbeetle. Now, I think Orbeetle is one of those decks where it's like, Zach, why are you putting Orbeetle on here? And I'm honestly not sure who necessarily came up with this concept, bringing it back first. If I could track it down to anyone, I'd say it's Azul, our Players' Cup 3 champion recently crowned. So what does Orbeetle do? Well, you can use Orbeetle's ability to spread a bunch of damage to your opponent's Pokemon. And you can decide to build up for its attack if your opponent's going to attach any energies. If they attack you, you can either use Cheryl or Malolana to heal. So this deck kind of like bides off a lot of your opponent's attacks while you spread a bunch of 10s all over. I know that I've played against this deck personally with decks such as ADPization and other things, and it is quite difficult to beat. The Mimikyu, of course, is in there. Um, I, I think that's one of my personal techs that I've added to this deck, but other players have played it in this deck before. Shadow Blocks, Blocking, Mewtwo, and Mew GX. So this, this deck kind of takes a mid-range control approach to the game where you're using Orbeetle VMAX's ability over and over again to spread damage, use its attack to knock out Pokemon that you could possibly isolate, and if you don't get enough energies for an attack, or if you need to heal, you can use Cheryl or Malolana. Um, I mean, it's it seems good enough if you ask me. Um, we'll, we'll see if this deck can continuously climb up the ranks. This is a deck that I personally wasn't expecting within the top 10 a couple weeks ago, but after playing around with it, it is something that is to be a force to be reckoned with. Now, I do want to note, this is a deck that I plan on covering on the channel really soon. I actually totally enjoy playing this Orbeetle VMAX deck, and I think it's one of those decks that I could probably um, explain to a lot of people so they might understand and enjoy playing it as well. So I think this deck is closely, it's, it's, it's closer to becoming the real deal. Um, still a little bit hesitant, but I will do a deck profile on it to see exactly what's going on in the near future. Stay tuned for that. Let's see what's up for number nine. So here we have Victini Mewtwo, and this is a deck that, I mean, I think spiritually Welder Mewtwo became, and it's the best way to run Victini, but right now it's not, like it, it gets well placed in the metagame, and it's it's, it's just kind of like not well placed. I don't know how to explain it, like it's more neutral of a deck, but it's just kind of struggling right now because it doesn't have the inherent strengths of other decks. It's not the best Welder deck in format because there's a lot of things going on here. There's a lot of like, it's a half a Victini, half a Mewtwo deck, which can lead to some natural inconsistencies. Maybe it's something that as we learn more about this archetype that we build it a little bit better. Um, and I mean, I don't think the build looks bad either. It's just probably just an awkward time for this deck. So I could see this deck hovering anywhere between the lower half of the top 10. Um, nine seems a little bit low for it, but it doesn't seem particularly wrong either. How does this deck work? Well, use Victini's v uh, max victory attack to prey on V Pokemon and V Max Pokemon. And for everything else, you can use either Mewtwo Mew GX, Heatran GX, Reshiram Charizard GX. So it's a welder based deck, so you could pick your poison, your half fire, your half psychic, uh, determine the Pokemon that you want to attack. But I think a lot of it's just like a deck with four welder and four boss can be a little bit awkward at times. And of course, you're gonna need to play Reset Stamp and as well with that to give yourself some kind of uh, comeback potential. And I mean, I, I guess you don't necessarily need to play Reset Stamp. I just think it's necessary 
with this particular build. So this deck has a little bit of an identity crisis in the format right now. And I think again, as the format like continues to alter and change, this deck could be a little bit better, but again, probably a lower half of the top uh, 10, um, six and below. I'd be surprised to see this deck making top five. So do keep that in mind while you do play this deck. At one point, I did think this was gonna be the best deck in format, but obviously here we are now. And I think uh, the top five are pretty solidified at this point. What is going to be in our number eight spots? Oh no, how the mighty has fallen. Eternatus, one of the best decks, if not one of the best decks before Battle Styles, has fallen from one of its top spots from number five last week all the way to number eight this week. And I mean, I guess it's not that big of a drop. It's only a few spots. And it really comes from the enhanced pressure that Rapid Strike Urshifu is bringing in the format. So Rapid Strike Urshifu continuously dominates regardless of other counters. And it's really seeming to be um, a bigger problem than most people expected. On top of Azul just winning the Players' Cup with it, it's one of those things where I think the deck's going to grow in popularity, which might even cause E-Turn to dip down. Now, I do think E-Turn's always going to be a top 10 deck in format, as long as it exists. It's just naturally powerful, but a lot of that comes down from Eternal Zone um, being able to bench extra Pokemon. That's a very good ability, something that we've seen with Skyfield as a stadium card, and the Dread End attack doing 30 for each Pokemon, again, very similar to Mega Rayquaza. So if history is going to repeat itself, I think that this card particularly is going to see a lot of success in the future, continuously do well. Um, this is actually one that I could see making top five in the format, depending on how Rapid Strike Urshfu, um, if people find counters to it. I mean, Galaxy Mewtwo is on the rise. That is a psychic based Mewtwo deck. So we'll have to see exactly where the format goes, but E-Turn can be a very strong metagame call. Don't count it out. And I know a lot of people are gonna ask me about how Sableye works. Really, it's an idea that I saw from Eddie Balmer's list that apparently he got from Tate White Cell. So instead of playing Palpad to get back your one copy of Phoebe, you can use Load Search over and over again in particular matchups, and Load Search allows you to grab other cards back. So if you ever find a necessary situation to do so, that's really cool. Um, it also gives you op options for Crazy Claws. And of course, it is another dark Pokemon just as bench fodder. So keep that in mind while you're playing this deck, make sure that you're living within your playstyle, and we'll see if this deck can spike up a little bit. I do think it can go up a little bit next week. Um, eight eight is, a, is a little bit low if you ask me. So let's see what's going on with number seven. So it's one of those things where Pikaram, this is the deck that allowed me to win the Players' Cup 2. Um, in battle styles, I thought it was going to be a little bit down, maybe not even a top 10 deck. I know that I think I omitted Pikaram or put it notoriously low it, it's just not necessarily performing to what we wanted in this format it's not bad it's a very neutral deck um, but being a neutral deck doesn't necessarily give you those polarizing matchups that allows you to win events so i think this deck is just the result of too many top fours top eights top 16s and they're not necessarily those high high spiked kind of results that we had from the week before. So that's why it dropped a bunch of spots. Now, if you ask me, I think this is a top five deck in formats. It very well could be. Um, and everything else is really just based on the current metagame. So while it wasn't necessarily a bad call last week, or it's not necessarily a great call this upcoming week, it's always going to be hovering between um, the lower half of the top five to the upper half of the top 10. So I think that anywhere between like a third through six spot it seems fair if i could give you any idea on where i think it should be placed so it's only really one spot out from where i think it should be um but on it i didn't want to necessarily go too hard with my uh, opinion especially when other decks have deserved their spots so what does this deck do for anyone who's wondering well bolton uses electrify to power up a couple lightning energies to your pokemon that could be pikachu zekrom gx raichu alolan raichu gx or mewtwo and mew gx and depending on who you power up, you can either use Perfection to copy a bunch of attacks, or you can use just like a normal full blitz to get more energies powered up. So it's really about between having the option to power up energy, doing damage, paralysis, sniping damage, on top of a build of deck that has Crushing Hammers, Team Yell Grunt, Marnie, Reset Stamp, and there's also the Stealthy Hoods to block the Mimikyu with Shadow Box. So, I mean, this deck seems to have it all. We'll see if this deck can move up a little bit. I think we're probably going to see it a little bit higher next week if I had any kind of hunch. 
Jumping into number six, we have a deck that, I mean, its identity has been a mystery to the majority of the community. I'm gonna go ahead and just call it Tempozard. I know, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay respect to Azul who literally just won the Players' Cup three. Shout out to him for a fantastic performance. I know he calls this deck Tempozard. And I know the creator of this deck, Andrew Hedrick, calls this deck Crisephalon, and it's really hard um, for a lot of players. So for the sake of it, I'm gonna be continuously calling this deck Tempozard from now on, but it is a Welder-based Blacephalon, Reshiram and Charizard, and Cramorant V deck. Now this deck had very strong results over the past um, week, and a lot of it comes from just being versatile. There wasn't straight Blacephalon version that basically cuts a Reshiram and Charizard, cuts a Cramorant, cuts a bunch of tech cards, adds fire, adds more Blacephalon to this deck that saw success, but it didn't see as much success as Tempozard. So I'm kind of grouping those um, together in a way because I think Tempozard is the better performing deck out of those. So it's one of those things where maybe Blacephalon would have been like 10th or 11th on this list, whereas this deck naturally got 6th. I'm not necessarily combining the results together, but I think that it's one of those things where going forward, I'm just going to really be covering Tempozard unless Blacephalon does anything different. How does this deck work, you might ask? Well, this deck works by using Welder on a variety of basic Pokemon that can be powered up with Fire Energy. Whether you want to use a two-prizer like Cramorant V, a single prize card Pokemon like Blacephalon, or a tag team three-prizer that can use double blaze checks out of nowhere, um, such as Reshizard. Enough of the decks really worked to kind of round this deck out, and I mean, there's always a lot of options. I took this deck quite far um, in the team challenge. My store made top 32. Shout out Team Torchlight from Burlington, Ontario. I know we fought really hard, but this deck does have some natural inconsistencies like any other Welder deck. So if you're like a Victini Mewtwo player, I think that this deck would be a little bit better to be playing right now, just because it's a little bit more versatile. And you can see where I saw that like, it's been number six like Victini Mewtwo for the past couple weeks. This deck seems like it's kind of taken that spot and it's gonna be lower top five, higher top 10. So six is probably appropriate, but I could see this deck making it as like top four, top five, kind of fourth, fifth. So we'll see how this deck continues to go. But I mean, it's a great choice in this meta, very neutral as a welder type deck. And there is a lot of skill behind this deck when it comes to sequencing. So I do recommend giving this deck a whirl. Wonder what we have for our middle of the pack at number five. Let's jump into that now. One of the biggest jumpers that we had this week is Mewtwo Psychic, or as a lot of the community calls it, Galaxy Mewtwo. Um, this deck works off of using Jirachi GX Star Surge, copying it with Mewtwo and Mew GX's perfection, not only trying to reduce your psychic weakness, but giving yourself a way to accelerate energies, whether it's in play or in your discard pile to your psychic type Pokemon. Um, a really cool thing that I liked from Cole Lewis's deck, where they came second at the Sunday Open, was the Latios GX that can use Clear Vision GX to stop what your opponent can do with their GX attacks. I also think Tag Purge is also a strong attack that you could use in a lot of scenarios. And I mean, this deck is kind of just like, it's got a bag of tricks, whereas if you can't fully knock out the Mewtwo Mew GX, if you attack into it, there's Darkest Tornado GX on Incineroar GX. You could snipe things with Garchomp Garatina. You could use Reshizard for a mid-range not GX Outrage or a Double Blaze GX to go through, like just doing 200. Like there's a lot of attacks at a lot of different energy costs and it could range from disruption, high damage, sniping. And I think that's really where this deck gains a lot of options. It's very much attach an energy evolve like attach an energy star surge attach another energy and you're really in the mix to be doing some great attacks stealthy hoods in there again to block the shadow box mimikyu that's being very popular in rapid strike urshifu decks so i mean the deck has a lot of really spooky answers to what we have going on in this format i could see this deck staying relatively where it is it did get a lot of results and it's very good at winning um events or placing highly so i'm not sure if it's just the case of a small select group of top players playing this deck or if it's the case where this deck's the real deal i do plan on covering this deck on the channel this week because it does seem like it's going to provide things whereas grass mewtwo seemed to be a little bit more of a fad i do think that psychic mewtwo is a very good cho deck choice going forward and I, it's one of those things where I'm I'm more than excited to cover it on my channel in the next coming days. So stay tuned for that later on this week. Let's jump into our number four spot. We're breaking through those barriers at the top four this week. So let's see where we're at. Here we are at number four, landing onto Mad Party, previously number eight. And you might be like, yo, Zach, why are all these psychic techs jumping up? Like Mew, Mewtwo and Mew GX, like 
with with which is like galaxy mewtwo why is that deck doing well why is mad party doing well well if you haven't noticed already we haven't gone over rapid strike urshifu so it is going to be covered in this video i don't want to do any surprises but that deck's been doing particularly well that deck has a glaring psychic weakness and poltegeist is a psychic type attacker so similar to galaxy mewtwo using a pokemon's type attributes against your opponent's weakness is going to be a good strategy. Remember when people played Colossal to beat Picaron back in the day? Remember when people were trying to beat Colossal, use Colossal to beat Etern? I remember that. I was one of those people. And it's one of those things now where using Poltegeist as a single prize card attacker, that's probably why this deck is edging out the Psychic Mewtwo by a little bit and cementing its spot as the best single prize card attacking deck we have in the game. And especially with the Denny GX as the rewards on the leaderboard right now. This deck pretty much falls into budget category if you ask me. So I'm really excited to um, kind of present like a really strong budget conscious um, fun to play deck that is killing it right now. Um, my brother Jay Lesage actually won the Sunday Open with this deck and you might be like, yo, Zach, I, I, I started Pokemon this week. I'm ready for the Players Cup 4. What does the Mad Party deck do? Well, I got y'all. Um, Mad Party, all the Pokemon have Mad Party attacks. That's Bunnelby, Dedenne, Galarian, Mr. Rhyme, and Poltegeist. How does that work? Well, you can attack with Bundle B and Poltegeist with either a Twin Energy or a Triple Acceleration Energy, and um, it does damage for the more Mad Party Pokemon you got chilling in your discard pile. How do you get them in there? Well, you got Research, you got Dedenne's, you got Tea Break on Poltegeist, you have Quick Balls, you have just whatever, however you want to get them into the discard pile. And of course, this deck does benefit off the reprint of Level Ball in Battle Styles. So this deck's absolutely bonkers right now. Um, I know that it basically loses to itself more often than not, but it is one of those things where this deck's probably going to stay within a top four deck, at least a top six deck, if you ask me. But it does have the possibility to edge itself up a little bit more. I think this deck is very well positioned right now, and I highly encourage you to give it a try. So here we are at number three, getting our bronze medal of the week, and that's gonna be ADP Zation with Crushing Hammers. So you might be like, yo, Zach, how did this deck go from number two to number three and all? Like, to start off, that's not really a big fall. I think it's just more of a metagame change, and the fact that this deck continuously performs at such high levels tells me that this deck is just instantly a top five deck, regardless however the metagame accepts it. Um, I think it's one of those things where this deck has proven itself since the start of Battle Styles, and I mean, the whole goal here is to go attach an energy, attach another energy, use Altered Creation GX. Altered Creation GX allows you to do plus 30 and draw an extra prize card every time you knock out your opponent's active Pokemon for the rest of the game. Um, that means that Zacian V is a great choice to do a lot of damage. You could power it up with Metal Saucer. There's Intrepid Sword where you could build up energies on that Pokemon. And of course, you can use things such as Mawile GX to bring unwanted Pokemon from your opponent's hand down to your bench. Now, Decidue, I did see a little bit of a rise in play. It is, it's not in this video, but it is about a top 12, 13 deck just to give you an idea of where it is. Um, so Aegislash might be worthwhile to add into this deck. And if you want to add Aegislash into this deck, I'm not entirely sure what I'd cut it to either a Crushing Hammer, maybe a Zacian V, something along those lines, maybe Chaotic Swell. But um, for the rest of it, the deck is just really designed to get that Altered Creation GX off going, Crushing Hammer to slow down your opponent's turn so you can just get off more Altered Creation GX. I won the Try Hard Mondays with this deck last week. I mean, it's one of those things where I very much like this deck, I think it's an enjoyable pick, and I think it can continuously do well in our upcoming format. So it's also one of my top picks for the Players' Cup 4. So if you are looking for a top pick, this would be currently my top pick, um, if not one of my top picks. So I'm excited to play around with this deck a little bit more. A common complaint is this deck's boring to play. A lot of people are not looking at it it's this is the best way to practice your sequencing this is the best way for you to master a deck it's a little bit easier to play for sure um very much as i'd consider it a tv dinner instruction but play pokemon with those training wheels on because it's it's not necessarily fun to play pokemon with the most strategic deck all the time um, because one wrong mistake can cost you a game whereas even if you make a mistake here or there with adp you're still very much in those games so if you are a new player pick up that league battleization deck from your local Target, Walmart, online, um, PTC Geo store, get that code in, you know what I'm saying? This is a great choice going forward, at least until it rotates um, in later on in September. Jumping into our silver medalist spot, we have a 
deck that is based off of metal type Pokemon got Zacian V Luke Metal with Zamazenta. So this deck's been on and popping this week, just getting a lot of those top results. Joshua Sutherland, my great friend, winning the massive 500 plus player chill. Um, so that definitely weighted this deck and cemented it as one of the top decks. And of course, just this deck having a lot of great placements. Um, this is honestly like, I know I've been talking about ADP Zacian for a while now, and that's one of my top picks for the Players Cup four, but this is also gonna be one of my top picks because after um, Rapid Strike Urshifu doing so well, this deck does very well against Rapid Strike Urshifu, especially after a bunch of people are going to want to try out Azul's Players Cup 4 winning deck. So, I mean, I think it's going to be absolutely hot. How does this deck work? Well, you have Zacian V as an attacking Pokemon. You could use that Brave Blade attack to do a lot of damage, get it built up with Metal Saucer, all that good stuff. And of course, Intrepid Sword allows you to build up energies and on board. Luke Metal is a great way to reduce damage for the rest of the game. This deck is kind of like a mid-range control deck, reducing damage with Full Metal Wall GX. You could take away your opponent's energies with that attack as well. So if they have a bunch of energies, I think that's worthwhile. You also have Metal Goggles to reduce damage. Cape of Toughness to give yourself more HP. Cape of Toughness is really for when you're playing against ADP so that they can't knock out your Zacian Vs. The numbers add up. And Malolana is a great healing card. Zamazenta V is more so against the VMAX decks, the Eternatus VMAX, the Rapid Strike VMAX. There's a lot of stuff going on there where I think Zamazenta can just win some certain matchups. So all these three Pokemon kind of make this magical combination of a very linear deck at times, but sometimes the deck does take a chess-like approach at the game. And I think a lot of the techs really allow you to kind of play your to your content where you have coating metal energy to stop fire type decks. You have capture energy that you can search out with a Guzma Hala that you can use to search out a Zacian to draw cards. You have Lily's Pokedol if you need to turn off. Tag call to search out a lot of this stuff. And of course, there's just so many combinations of great cards in this deck. And I know that Jake Gearheart somewhere is smiling knowing that I put Luke Metal at number two. Um, so that's that's what makes my day. All, all jokes aside, this deck is seriously a contender right now and it moved up a bunch of spots just based off pure hardcore top placements and it's well positioned. I said it before, I wasn't necessarily a huge fan of this deck in the past, but as we saw a bunch of competitive VMAX Pokemon getting released in battle styles, this deck is certainly, um, I, I've taken a liking to it and I think it's one of the better decks that we have in format, so be sure to check that out. Here we are at our number one pick, the best deck that we have for the week, and I mean this one's been the top deck for a few weeks now, that is Rapid Strike Urshifu V Max. Now, it seems to be a history lately where I'm like, hey, you wonder what, I was not a huge fan of this card at the beginning, or at least when I read the early Japanese translations, but as I played more and more with this card, this card is incredibly skill based because you have Gale Thrust, you have G Max Rapid Flow, that basically allow you to place your damage appropriately to the Pokemon and plan a bunch of awesome knockouts. You can further exemplify that with Zigzagoon, so you can place damage counters with Headbutt Tantrum, you can remove your opponent's energies like Weakness Guard Energy with Gyratina, reduce your weakness with Jirachi GX, stop bench damage with Mew, and Mimikyu is there to stop your opponent's GX Pokemon with abilities, <coughs> Mewtwo and Mew GX. <coughs> But in all seriousness, this deck just has a lot of answers to what your opponent could throw at you, and it gives you lines of plays that you can kind of come up with on the spot. So maybe you need to get a scoop of net. Well, you could use Jirachi to grab a scoop of net. How do you thin out your deck? Well, the same way that a Tempozard would. There's a certain action between using Quick Ball beforehand or playing a supporter before or after a Stellar Wish, or using the Dene GX Crobat, thinning your hand down. There's a bunch of cool things that you could do with a deck like this. And of course, like, it, it, there's just there's just a, a bunch of strategies that lie beneath this deck. I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of lost for words, but basically you should just take this as this deck is high skill, high reward. If you know what you're doing with this deck and you're able to plan multiple turns above in advance, this deck can be quite strong. This deck also has a decent matchup spread against a lot of the metagame and it doesn't necessarily lose to a lot of the single prize card decks because you can draw multiple prize cards with G-Max Rapid Flow. That allows it to be a serious contender and it's probably why it takes that number one spot over and over again. This deck is really kind of coming off the heels of Stefan Ivanov, so one of the best players in the entire game's performance at the Chill TCG 500 plus player events. Honestly, I think he would have won that event if he played against anything else that was not Luke Metal in the finals. And I mean, Luke Metal is just going to be a tough matchup. Every deck has one of those matchups. But 
Stefan did overcome a lot of tough obstacles during that event, including sleep, uh, sleep deprivation. Jeez, that's one word that does not want to come off the tip of my tongue. But it just really shows that this deck, um, in the hands of a great player, can really push its limits. So give it a try if you haven't already. This is going to be one of those ones where if you don't know what you're doing, maybe hold back on it at a tournament, play play with your friends, become accustomed to it, watch some gameplay videos, maybe uh, on, I don't know, maybe on the Zaklasage PTCG channel or something like that, or maybe rewatch the Players' Cup 3 VODs to watch Azul find how he clawed his way to victory. But at the end of the day, this is going to be one of those great choices that you can make, especially if you know what you're doing with it. We'll see if it can make number one next week. I'm not entirely sure if it continuously can hold on to the spot, because the more it holds on to the spot, the more it's um, at risk to get encountered. And I mean, we're already seeing Mad Party and Psychic Mewtwo, Galaxy Mewtwo decks climb up, so this deck is certainly at risk of just getting hard countered. But only time will tell. Right now it's number one, and I think it's a great choice right now. And that's what we got going on for this video today, peeps. Hopefully you enjoyed looking at all these top 10 decks. Did your deck make the list? Did it not make the list? Ask me in the comments below. I do get back to everyone as soon as possible. I try to be a chill dude. So uh, whenever whenever you got a question, I try to be there to give a great answer. Again, if you haven't subscribed to this video by now or subscribed to the channel, subscribe right now. Totally appreciate it. We are so close to 3,500 subs and it, it would just be in the world to me if we can get closer to my goals of reaching the moon with all of the subscribers. So thank you everyone for all of the support. Giving this video a like does signal boost it to the masses. And again, um, thank you so much for watching everyone. I know I got a lot of editing. Uh, this video is like 12 separate parts. Um, just from what I've recorded right now. So thank you so much everyone for watching. Stay tuned for next week. And if you're playing in the Players' Cup 4, best of luck. A lot of these decks are going to be great. But if you haven't got a chance, check out my Players' Cup 4 strategy videos because some of those deck lists and ideas might change from what we have going on here because it's you can change your play style up depending on the tournament. So that being said, I'm going to go edit, but have yourself a great one. Peace out. I want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's become a channel member so far. Some peeps wa love watching my videos, and I totally appreciate that, but some peeps have gone more than out of their way beyond just watching my videos and have supported me financially. So shout out to everyone who's been featured on this channel, who's going through this list of names. We actually have so many channel members that I can't fit them in a single slide, so I figured this might be the best way to get everyone appreciated and kind of showcase all of the top supporters of the Zach Lesage PTCG YouTube channel. Seriously, it means the bottom, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I it's honestly, I'm almost at a loss for words but I, I'm so happy that you are all appreciating and loving the content and that it's hitting home and I mean I'm all, I'm up all in my feels so I hope that you uh, <laughs> understand and thank you so much everyone if you want to become a channel member totally consider it um, I'll make it worth your while um, and I, I totally mean that I'll do everything I possibly can for my channel members to make it sure that it's worth their while so thank you so much everyone and it, it, it's just amazing thank you for everyone who's wondering on how to become a channel member, I first and foremost appreciate your consideration. You can click on any one of my videos on desktop, and then you can click join. Join will give you all the opportunities about what we have going on. You can support my content, you can choose the deck list hookup, where you get access to my deck list, and we have a group coaching package as well. Um, there's a lot of other things like custom emotes, early access to videos that I try to offer, so you would just click join and you'd be good and you'd be featured at the end of these videos. Thanks so much everyone. Thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel. If you haven't already, it'd mean the world to me if you could subscribe to help support me as a content creator. Thanks again and have yourself a great one.